the car buying process uh, is one of the most misunderstood and dynamic processes that consumers undertake today. It's influenced by technology, society, and economics. It's changing even as we speak. So for the next 15 minutes, I want to walk you through what that process looks like today, how it's changed over time, and some of the key things that we need to understand if we're to reach those in-market shoppers. The first thing I want to talk about is the largest, the largest influencer pretty much in society is the internet. Canada is, a, is an internet-based country. We're the most online in the world, the highest penetration of mobile, and we spend the most time. In short, Canada is an online nation. So it's no surprise when we understand that that is actually influencing the automotive process. Our latest research shows that over eight, almost 85% of consumers will use the internet and online as part of their car buying process. Just last year, this number was only 70%, and it's going to continue to grow into the future. This is the most popular channel for consumers to use. It's more popular than dealers, advertising, friends and family, or even television. And when we talk about online being part of the process, it's not just in one section. From the beginning of the process and evaluating what consumers want, to find deep research, and even picking an individual car and a dealer, online is the most influential channel. So what does this mean to us? I think there's four key trends that we need to be aware of if we're to try and influence in-market shoppers. The first, car shoppers are not using offline media. Offline media gives you reach, but if you're trying to reach in-market shoppers, it doesn't take into consideration that they're not interested in using those channels and they're not influenced by them. So if you're looking to reach those consumers, you need to find targeted media such as online. The analogy I have is if you're trying to reach in-market shoppers through radio, it's like buying Cracker Jacks for the peanuts. You can get some, but it's not particularly efficient. Second thing, dealers are becoming less influential on the journey. Our latest research shows a massive swing in terms of how consumers use dealers, shifting from the dealership at the very end stage now to online. And this is only going to continue to accelerate as online becomes more and more a part of the important part of the journey. Third trend, these journeys are becoming much shorter. Consumers are visiting fewer dealers. They're taking less time to do that. They're showing up at dealerships ready to make their purchase. So even though the actual average length of time in the process is 16 days, 42% of consumers spend less than a week in the in-market process. And while the average is visiting about two dealerships, 36% of, dealers will visit, 36 of consumers will visit only a single dealer before they buy their car. The last trend that's important is consumers are showing up at dealerships unannounced, more informed, and ready to buy. When they show up, they know the car that they want, they know approximately what they should pay, and they're less open to influences from the dealership. A third of consumers, our research is showing, show up at the dealership ready to buy. So if online is important to reach consumers, not all online channels are as effective. You have a lot of choices marketplaces, websites, review sites, Google. Each one of them has a different role. And when we look at online and break it out into the different components, we can see that marketplaces are predominantly the channel that consumers are using as part of that process. But we also see that there's dealer websites and review sites. Each one of these sites functions in a different role, but largely it's marketplaces that are driving the consumer purchase process. To understand why, you need to understand that the process itself is extremely complex. If you think about a base decision, the choice between a new car and a used car, our research shows that almost a quarter of people who buy a car will actually switch from when they started. 25% of people who buy a used car started their process looking for a new car. 29% who bought a new car started buying a used car. And if this base decision flip-flops back and forth, imagine how complicated it is when you're looking at 20 or 30 different cars. So to kind of illustrate how complex that process is, I want to take a look at an individual kind of maker model. So using the data from autotrader.ca and all the, consumer process, all the consumer data there, I want to isolate on people who are looking for a Dodge Dart. So these are all the makes and models that consumers who start looking for a Dodge Dart are also considering. This is the very beginning of the consumer process. And you can see two things. One, there's not very many cars here, and two, they're what you'd call the usual suspects. Similar manufacturer, similar size, similar price point. 
But when we switch and we look at the end of the process, people who actually reach out and convert what we call converting on a Dodge Dart, in between those two, these are all the cars that they've looked at. Two things to note, there's two and a half times more cars that consumers consider. And, this, and the consideration set includes things that you wouldn't think is a competitor to a Dodge Dart. We've expanded into sedans. We've expanded into luxury brands. We've expanded into large-scale cars. The marketplace facilitates this process for the consumer. It introduces him to cars that he wouldn't normally consider and makes the process of switching and expanding and contracting his consideration set seamless and frictionless. Trying to replicate this process outside of the marketplace is labor-intensive, complicated, and lengthy. And consumers are not interested in spending time. So what is the role of dealer websites and review sites? So our research shows that three quarters of consumers that find the car that they're interested in on AutoTrader will still go to Google and to dealer websites. But what they're looking for is what we call corroborating data. They're looking for the dealer's location. They're looking for reviews. They're looking for his website. They're looking for things that help him understand and confirm that the decision that he's made about his car or his dealer is the right one. So these are not substitutes for, for traffic. They're not substitutes for information. They're simply secondary sources. They're helping the consumer confirm his decision, but they're not driving his decision. So what are the key things that you as dealers should take away from our understanding about consumers? First, it's online is the most used channel in that journey and it's only going to continue to intensify. That journey is shorter, and it's going to, and it's going to consume large, fewer dealers, and it's going to shorten. Those consumers, when they are ready to buy, they're going to show up at your dealerships unannounced, they're going to show up uninformed, and they're going to show up ready to buy. And waiting to try and influence them when they show up at your door is too late. Marketplaces are places to reach those consumers in the in-market process. That is where they are looking for information to drive their decisions. It's a, strong it's a strong component of the process, and it's only going to continue to grow. And other sources of information, like dealer websites and review sites, even Google, they're complementary to marketplaces. They allow consumers to confirm the decisions that they've made based on the data they see in the marketplace. So hopefully you've understand a couple of these key trends to help you understand how to reach those in-market consumers. Because as the online channel starts to grow and become more bedded in with consumers, this is only going to exasperate uh, the challenges that we face today in trying to reach and influence those in-market consumers. Thanks. <laughs>